Welcome, Welcome right here. to Global Conversations About Boundaries. And I'm here today with Dr. Priscilla Kuser. Hi. And hi, Dr. Priscilla. Hi, Sari. <laughs> it is great to have you here, especially at the beginning of a new year. Mm-hmm. What I love about your work is that you really help people understand how to reach their goals. <laughs> and, you know, like at the beginning of a new year, people are, are often all about like setting their goals and figuring mm -hmm. out their business and figuring out their life. And particularly for entrepreneurs or business owners, you know, there's a lot of looking ahead and trying to figure things out, but there are also maybe personal goals and how you strategize your life. And I invited Dr. Priscilla here with us today to share some tips and strategies about how to deal with goal setting without getting overwhelmed and how to manage them with some good boundaries. So we're going to get right into it. All right. So Dr. <laughs> Priscilla, why do you say set goals, not resolutions at the beginning of a new year? Um, sorry, the reason why I say that is because when you think about resolutions, most people when they set their resolution on January 1st, chances are by January 5th, they probably haven't even done anything with it because the resolution, they're not really explaining what it is. They say things like, I wanna lose weight, and then they leave it at that. Whereas with a goal, you're gonna be more specific about what you want to accomplish. Mm. And that's what makes the difference. With goal setting, you need to write it down, you need to be specific about it. Because Harvard, Harvard Business Review did a study wherein they found out that only 3% of people actually write goals down. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm a writer. Don't tell me that people only, only 3% are writing them down. Are writing them down. Oh my gosh. So right there, your first tip is write, write down your goals. your goals down. Yes. Because writing down your goals is a big part of committing to you. As not committing to me, it's committing to you. And when you write it down, you get to see what it's really about because now it becomes real. It's like, oh, I wrote it down. I wrote down that I want to lose 20 pounds by summer of this year. You know, or let's I'll, say if you're working on a business and if you're working on a business, you have a goal to increase your revenue this year or you're starting a new business. Maybe you're starting a side gig. Mm -hmm. And so you're, if you write down what your goals are for this year. You got it. It's like my favorite one. People say this year, I want to make money. Yes, Yay. Make money. That's yeah. great. Yeah. You want to make money. Let's talk about how you're making this money. What do you need to do to make this money? You know, what exactly do you want to accomplish other than just making money? Because once you focus on those parts that those are the parts of your business, you will make the money. But if you just focus on, I want to make money without having that plan, because you, you have to have that plan. You have to have the plan of how you're going to get from point A to point B. How are you going to get from here to here? And we that's have what to have you that mean plan. by goals is that you have to have a plan. People reach out to me all the time and always ask me like, you know, how is it that, you know, you, you keep like building your business and it keeps growing and developing and it's all for me. This is why I have invited you on because mm -hmm. I feel like you explained it better than I do. <laughs> it's all about how you define your goals. And yes. can you share with people like how it, how, how can they help themselves not get too overwhelmed by having too many goals? Because I see people make that mistake all the time. Like they write, if they do write it down, then they'll write down goal after goal after goal. And it's yes. so overwhelming. Yes. I would never approach something like that. What do you recommend so that people don't get overwhelmed by their goals? One of the first things I recommend to people is write down at least three goals, at least three. And then look back at those three and rank them. Rank them in order of 
the most important to the least important. Just out of those three. Don't add anything else to it. Just out of those three. Then don't start look, adding more. Don't, don't add more. <laughs> then look back at the one that you called number one and oh, focus on that goal. Now, I the next part would be this. looking out the steps you need to take. We're not talking about more goals. You have the one goal, but you have to look at where you are now and then the steps you have to take to gradually accomplish that goal. So it becomes much more realistic, much more reasonable, much more manageable. And my, mo my most important favorite part is it keeps you motivated. Because once you start looking at those little pieces bit by bit, you accomplish it, you celebrate your success for accomplishing that one thing, you move on to the next and it helps you to stay motivated to reaching your bigger goal. I really hope everybody listening <laughs> like writes what you just said, writes that down and reads that or replays that over and over because I've just finished my fourth book. Mm -hmm. And people say to me all the time, I want to write a book. How, how do you make the time? How do you do it? First of all, <laughs> just like you said, it, I, if I'm writing a book, it's on top of my goal to write that book. That's, that's the book I'm writing. I'm not mm -hmm. writing 13 other things at once. <laughs> no. I, if I am dedicating the time to complete a book. Mm -hmm. I am writing that mm -hmm. and I'm not writing all the other things. And I see people get lost and then, you know, it's three years have gone by and they're still don't have that thing even really four chapters in yet. Yeah. because they're not staying on it. And so as simple as it sounds to pick one goal and make that your priority and work that one goal until you get somewhere on it and know what your steps are and break it down is really the way that people can like achieve their dreams. So we don't want people to get overwhelmed Mm -mm. with too many goals. Now, talk to us a little bit about the boundaries around staying in the goal that you've set for yourself. So it's funny you should say that because that's what was coming to mind for me just now is because you still have to have some boundaries in there. Because like you said, you meet somebody, they tell you they want to write a book. Three years later, you ask them, oh, so how was your book? Because you're thinking they wrote it, right? Then they're like, oh, I'm still on chapter four. How many chapters do you need? Ten okay, so the four years ago, you, okay, but you haven't done that. And then they tell you about all these things that happen in life. I get it. Life does happen. Happens to me. It happens to, to Sari. It happens to all of us. Life happens, but it's having that plan. Because once you write down your one goal that you want to focus on, make that goal your priority. Then you're focusing in on that goal by looking at those little steps that you have to take. And with each step comes an action. So you have to take a specific action. So you're looking at that action you need to take. Then you put a deadline on it. And a lot of us don't like committing to deadlines. <laughs> we think we can do it all on our own. But honestly, sorry, I, I use deadlines for myself, right? And I say, okay, I need to complete this by Friday at five o'clock. And then I panic when it's four o'clock. I'm like, oh my God. So you do have to set that deadline for yourself. Why? Because that's going to help keep you moving forward. It is going to help keep you focused. And when you, can when you make anybody, it that priority. How can anybody reach a goal if they don't know when it's due by? Yes. <laughs> they, they have it out there and and ever, never, never land. Really. That's exactly where it goes too. It yes. goes right to never, never land because there was never a date like of mm -hmm. when you were going to do it by. And mm -hmm. I know these things might sound really simple to people listening, but I, I have too many conversations with people that really validate that, that you need to break things down just the way Dr. Priscilla is talking about and get focused on a goal, like, sure, I have other priorities going on in my life. But the one thing that I'm working on doing my, mm -hmm. my personal goal, whether it's for my business or for my personal life, 
I'm focused on that one. Mm -hmm. And then I do all the steps that you're describing. And, you know, for people that really want to get somewhere that feel like they really struggle with this process, Mm -hmm. I would love them to contact you and get some help because this is what you help people do, right? Yes, I do. Because the goal setting is... I, I would love to say it's the biggest thing for your, your, your business that you're growing because, or even the one you're thinking about starting and you have the someday mentality, let's make someday today, you know, because with that goal, you know, I focus on the goals because once you know that how of your business, that is going to help make so much sense in your business because knowing the how is embedded in that goal It is connected to what you're selling. If it's your product, it's your service, who you're selling your products and services to, the things you want to accomplish to keep your business moving forward, but also to help keep that balance. Because with the goals comes really having that action plan. And the action plan, you can include the business, and especially as an entrepreneur, you're going to have business and personal, they're going to always be together. Because most of us, we work from home, right? So personal is always, <laughs> always on the other side of the door. So sometimes <laughs> it might mean that you might have to have that plan written out where you do factoring the other people in your life. It of could course. be the birthday. It could be the graduation. It could of be a recital. Course. We don't want to the- miss any of these. We don't want to miss our families. We don't want to mm-hmm. miss our life. But you still have to block out when you're going to work on your goal and when you're going to do your other things. Because you're right, the people on the other side of the door that we love, (laughs) you know, um, that that can also take everything too, unless we carve away like this is my time to focus on this because I know I have my deadline. I know when I'm finishing this. I have to tell you a funny story because when you brought up deadlines and knowing when something's due. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of this sweater I was knitting for my husband mm-hmm. and it had no deadline <laughs> and uh, the sweater took seven years. Oh okay? Usually I knit a sweater a year and I always have it done by mm-hmm. his birthday or by the holidays in December. So mm-hmm. it's always one or the other. Mm-hmm. And every year I make him a sweater, but one year I picked a really tough sweater And Uh I gave myself no deadline Mm because, you know, his birthday came and went, (laughs) holidays came and went, one year went by, two years went by, three. I had no deadline. I didn't know like when I was going to finish it by. And that what you just said is such an instructive thing. Like if I was working on a book and I had no idea when I expected to have it done, (laughs) It would probably take me the rest of my life because I wouldn't have that expectation. So for for those who have a dream, Mm -hmm. have something that you want to see yourself do in your life, Mm -hmm. and it could be a business, it could be a personal goal, whatever it is that you're working on, I... I highly recommend that you get the foundation, you get your strategy in place. And if you need help with that, and you should at this point be able to tell if you're the kind of person that doesn't achieve your goals, yeah. year after mm-hmm. year, like my, my sweater from my husband. <laughs> if I mean, you're, you're <laughs> working on the seven year sweater, please call Dr. Priscilla and get yeah. some help, get the foundation right. Mm-hmm. And what do you think like the biggest mistake is that you see people make that you feel like you see it over and over again? It's like such a pattern that people make a mistake with. I'm going to pick on you for a little bit with your seven year sweater because you okay. said something a little different. You said it was a more difficult pattern uh-huh. that you were working yes, on. It was. So when we pick something that is difficult for us, our motivation to complete that task, it goes down because we know it's challenging. We know it's hard. We know we got to tap into skill sets that we don't necessarily have or strategies we don't know. So all of that negativity comes up before any of the positives. So it's really having that reflection time and looking inward to yourself for what am I good at? And I know for some people that I've encountered 
it's a difficult question. I've asked people, oh, what's some, what are your strengths? I don't got no strengths. Yeah, you do. What are you good at? Not good at anything. Yeah, you are. What do you enjoy doing the most? What is something you can do in the blink of an eye? So I have to have that conversation going with them and really let them free up and just share with me some of the things they do in their life, right? And as they're talking, I can be like, oh, so you are good at technology when it comes to using Facebook, when it comes to using YouTube. Oh, you can write paragraphs. You can, you can write blogs. You, you have some strengths. So why are we not using those strengths? Why are you looking at creating a website when you know that is something that is difficult for you because you don't have all those skills? Why are you focusing on that? Because now you're using that as an excuse for why you're not moving forward because it's oh. something difficult. So I work with a lot of people and even oh, my school psychology I background. Love that. Wait, what yeah. did you just say? <laughs> with my school psychology background, I work with a lot of people who we look at the weaknesses in school psychology and how we can improve them, right? But sometimes those weaknesses are really, really difficult to improve, but we don't focus on the strengths. Because a lot of times, even going through that. school, even if you never met a school psychologist, you know, going through school, they always focus on you getting the F, you getting the D, pull it up, pull it up, get an A, get an A. So they're always focused on your weakness. Now as adults, we're looking at, oh my God, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you're ignoring your strengths because you focus on your strengths, you're going to take yourself further with growing your business. You focus on your weakness, you're going to be banging your head against that wall, being frustrated, oh my gosh. and then this walk away. This is mind blowing. This is, <laughs> this is so true. And, you know, when I, when I take what you're saying and I apply it to myself, like, you know, there are lots of things that I'm not good at. And the things that I'm not good at, I will get others who are yes. consultants and have them help with. And I stay on the parts that I know I can do. And then I get help with the parts that I can't do. Like, even when, I, even though I've just finished book number four, mm -hmm. I'm not great at setting up the initial structure of the book. Mm -hmm. I have ideas, but they go all over the place. So I always bring in the person that I call my, my book birther, she's like my, <laughs> yeah. my, mid, my book midwife mm -hmm. to help me. Her name is Deborah mm -hmm. Nettleman. She comes in and she helps me with just getting the structure laid out because mm -hmm. I, I just need help with that part before I can go off with it. So knowing what parts are hard Mm -hmm. And figuring that out with you, because you don't want to do a seven-year sweater, I promise. <laughs> Nobody wants to do the no. seven-year sweater. <laughs> um, and I love that you caught that in my story, Dr. Priscilla, because that, it was, it was too hard. It mm -hmm. was too hard of a sweater. And, um, and I didn't enjoy coming to it every time yeah. because it was so challenging. Um, and, you know, I knit because I enjoy it. So I mm -hmm. could really take that analogy into a lot of thoughts about uh, how I approach work. But I think that was a great example for people of how you approach work. Yes. <laughs> and I just love the way you pick up on small little things and, and really illuminate them and make them magnified and clear and easy to understand. And um and I just, uh, I admire you. I'm grateful to have met you. Thank you. <laughs> and I love what you're, what you're offering people. And I think this is, you know, so if you're somebody out there and you're listening and you're thinking like, you've got a, you've got a gig that you want to start working on for 2021, you've got some dreams. Um, I Let's think make it a reality. <laughs> yes. Make your dreams a reality. And I, you can only do it if you meet someday today and stop pushing it off into the future. Love that. Okay. Thanks for the time, Dr. P. You're welcome, Ari. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Take good care. <laughs>